Hey, welcome back everybody once again to the PCS Summer with one game in the books for tonight. We are turning to our second match up. It is, of course, going to be Impunity taking on Mega Bank Beyond Gaming. But before we get underway, we do have to take a moment to thank our wonderful sponsor, CTBC Bank. Thank you so much for making the PCS possible, as well as a special shout out to our broadcast partners, Carry Live, Riot Games, and Garena. Now, Nightstar, Mega Bank Beyond Gaming were looking nigh unstoppable, but all of mm -hmm. a sudden, a big old upset happened yesterday. Yeah, they did get upset, and uh, it was in relatively convincing fashion, too. Frank Esports really uh, went up and took it to them. And uh, I'm not sure if it's because of that loss, but they are coming in with a change. We have Liang back in the top lane uh, playing for uh, Beyond Gaming. So I would say when it comes to comparing Liang and Li Kai, uh, Liang definitely more about that lane phase but we're going to start with impunity uh it's going to be icu alex apex and annex are going to be starting today and winnie in that bottom lane so this is a lot of moving parts is what we've seen from this impunity roster so far yeah you want to talk about changes this is a team that clearly has eight rotating cast members right now it's a little bit uh hard to to get a fix on who is going to be the, the the starting five overall in a couple of roles? Obviously, ICU and Alex are uncontested. I do think Apex has looked a little bit more consistent than Husky on the champions we expect in the meta. Obviously, LZ less tested uh, overall uh, than Onyx. Of course, you know, formerly on a very, very experienced player going back to the HQ days for the old school LMS fans. And then Winnie and Nature, I, it's kind of hard to tell because they have very similar stats and they both have only played Nautilus. So... You know, I, I don't know. I've never seen them both in the same room at the same time. Uh, I, mean, I guess technically we do because they're in big band, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, anyways, their opponents are Mega Bank Beyond Gaming. We got Liang coming back to the top side. We haven't seen them all split, so now we'll finally get a chance to shine. Joining Husha, Minji, Wako, and Kino. And this is a team that, despite being knocked down by Frank Esports, still are uh, rocking the top half of the table quite well. We've seen them really come out the gates swinging and look very good with the exception of yesterday. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, touching on the differences, Liang, of course, we know him more to be lane dominant. Uh, but Li Kai, when he has come in, he's been very willing to start out fights. He's very willing to just YOLO dive in. We've seen it when he was on Machi, when he was playing the Camille, he would very much just go in even when he was very uh, well set up to just dominate the side lane. He, he just goes ahead and throws his body into these team fights. So uh, we'll see how uh, things change up with uh, Liang back in the top side. But on the flip side, we do have uh, Annex and Wako being the comparison down in that bottom lane. On, of course, uh, played just one game of Jinx. Um, so not much to take be a out little, of it. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, I think uh, we need more time to see if he's going to, mm -hmm. to end up being the starter. Obviously, he's got experience in spades. The question is, is he still going to be up to snuff? Wako, yes. there's no question, right? Not only is there nobody contending for a spot, but Wako last split, the big question we had to ask was, was he going to be able to fill the massive shoes of Doggo? And the answer was unequivocally yes. He has been a solid performing player in that bottom lane, one of our better AD carries in a field that is pretty stacked at the top half of the table, and he puts out 33% of his team's damage. That Lucian has been one of his best champions this split. I do gotta hand it to him. I think there's a lot of that have a hard time in this league making Lucian Nami work, like we just saw last game with Sem9. This is not one of those teams. I think Wako has really finished fixed this out. I think Kino has done well on the Nami, which has been one of the few champions he's thrived on that isn't a tank engage. And we'll see if that trend continues here today as Impunity start out by banning the Talia and the Ari. Leah already taken away. Minji, of course, uh, playing those two champions. Uh, those are his big ones. And a lot of mid lane focus currently throw down. And the Lucian will get taken away. So Zeri, Callista, those are the next two that are going to be come under focus here. Of course, Wukong, Diego also left available as of this moment. So a couple of uh, champions that could have their intention turned on to with this last I, man. I wonder if Beyond decide they don't need to respect Onyx on this. No, they actually ban the Azir, so they focus on that mid lane <laughs> oh, yeah. entirely. They're gonna leave Zeri up. Oh, and it, are you really? Are you not gonna take Zeri? They take the Wukong instead. Okay. 
opting for the stronger team fight champion and oh, or stronger team fight jungler in Wukong, but that means it's going to be Zeri. Uh, they can lock in the Vega if they really wanted to. They didn't need to, given the fact that Wukong has already come out, but they go ahead, lock that in. Looks like it might be a possible Senna Tom Kench, but Twitch Yumi, of course, a very real possibility. It would also mean that we're not going to see Nautilus in that bottom lane. Nautilus also Once. one of those champions that is played into Zeri because of the fact that, well, it's a point and click ah. CC at six. Oh, we got you baited. We've been yeah. bamboozled, Dice oh. Star. It was a Nautilus all along. Yeah, Nautilus Jinx. Um, all right. Well, when we talk about support players for uh, Impunity, it's not really any support. It's just Nautilus, you know? Nautilus is just the uh, Impunity support. Now, on the flip just side for Nautilus. DYG, it opens a lot of things because you've taken a lot of these control mages out of school, right? So you can play something uh, like the Silas, perhaps. Uh, they'll go ahead and lock in this Sichuani pick, which is not what I expected coming in from Liang, but maybe we're going to see something from last game where it's going to be Sichuani in the middle. Uh, or it could be Sejuani support. I mean, that's always a possibility, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Nautilus. And Kino mm -hmm. does like his engaged potato tank supports. I think it's possible. <laughs> Big potatoes, yes. Mm -hmm. It does open up the possibility of locking in something like the Leona. Um, I personally would have liked to uh, like to see maybe a Lulu to pair up with the Zeri, but again, it's Kino. So these engaged supports are going to be a little bit more effective. Maybe even the set. Set's very good into Wukong, yeah, right? He jumps possible. in, you chuck him out. Goodness, four mid lane bands, if you include the Swain there against Apex. That is that is uh that is something they've they've clearly put their focus on. And I, I everyone curious because Minji Minji has kind of shown himself to not really be struggling in this meta despite what we expected. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't let the hover fool you. Unfortunately, Belveth not enabled for today's games as we still are on patch 12.11. Next um, week. They though. can hover it. Yeah, they can hover it. They can have some fun. We'll, we'll, we'll see Belveth turning up eventually here in the PCS. Adds the Alistar. Huh? It's a lock in for Kino. All right. So we still get a big old tanky tank. Yeah. And uh, this champion also plays very similarly to what the set would have offered right where the wukong goes in well the alistar head butts them up uh, now for the side of impunity how do they run up the composition they go ahead lock in the gnar uh, not really inspired by icu's performance so far the split hasn't really looked to diversify his uh, camp pool of top lane it's been pretty stock standard stuff and as a result, maybe uh, he's just trying to facilitate more of his team. But we get a zillion pick locked in. So this is all in. I'm just making sure Annex gets to carry these fights. And so far, I mean, there's a lot of bruisers showing up on BYG, right? So you definitely want a big damage dealer to try and cut through the big mm -hmm. burly front line. I got, I got two words for you. I saw a Kraken Slayer. Uh, we'll see what Beyond pair this up with. It's a Yone for Minji. That does feel right up his alley. So there, there's a lot of bruises, but there is a lot of damage potential coming through as well. And Beyond Gaming, you know, they give away some of these things, but such a heavy focus on mid means Apex is on to this more supportive champion, the Zillion. This is going to be an interesting one. Yeah, and what's really exciting about this composition is also all for the side of BYG with the Sejuani. You're actually able to really proc the passive very readily with the Yone and the Viego. So when it comes to objective taking, this is a very, very fast objective taking squad. And they're not exactly lacking on magic damage as well because Zeri brings in a lot of that magic damage threat. Uh, so... All in all, uh, I like the composition build coming in from the side of BYG for the side of Impuni. This feels like they aren't going very far out there when it comes to stretching their picks. The Zillion certainly a curveball pick, um, but when you are somewhat of a legacy player like Apex is, most likely you put in a lot of time on Zillion, especially when he was very hot uh, in the meta. So uh, this is definitely all in on Annex, which is something that he is very familiar with when he was playing on HQ way back when. I mean, this is why you have you have him in the lineup, right? It kind of feels like the CFO with Shun, right? Uh, you want to put a lot of resources on him, make sure he can get the outplay. It's almost a bit of a spring composition where you want to try and protect your AD carry as much as possible, let him get to that three-item spike and just unleash 
Rockets. We'll see if it's going to work out for them. Impunity sitting at two and three with love to try and round things out here at the end of week two. I've had a hard time with some of the stronger opponents. I think we expected them to be performing maybe a little bit better than they have. I and mean, we gave them a dark horse opportunity to push deeper up the standings. But if they can beat Beyond Gaming here, like Frank Esports did, that will change the conversation. It won't be easy. Definitely won't be easy. But an exciting start coming out in this bottom lane. Both of these AD carries starting out with Cult. So uh, if CC does land on one of these AD carries, they will pop. Uh, but certainly, I, I think both of them are looking at the long game. They're able to get that. Uh, they really need to prioritize itemization here. Uh, the faster they can get to their items, the better. Because for Annex, it's <laughs> he is the one big damage that for his squad. And on the flip side, Wako, if he gets his items, uh, where's the threat onto him, right? Uh, yes, there's the Nautilus ultimate to lock him down. But if he ever, ever gets in range, then the issue is he, he, he shouldn't get into range. And the Zillion isn't going to dive onto him. The Wukong, if he jumps in, he's just going to get headbutted out. And ICU, I mean, he, he's really just been underperforming. So we need to see a lot from him. So overall, I think BYG, they are really set to succeed here. Yeah, I think ICU has been a big question mark, right? Because there was such, so, such hype around him being signed onto this roster and, you know, potentially seeing his, uh, his potential unleashed. But it's yet to surface. So, as we get underway, Winnie Kino trading out a little bit. Little Jinx versus Zeri matchup. I kind of like mm -hmm. uh, when these two champions go head-to-head, -head, Nightstar. It's really fun because it, it's kind of like Jinx is just sitting there, like, with Pow Pow going forward, looking at Zeri like, wait, who are you? I'm you, <laughs> but better. Yeah, thematically, uh, yeah. Zeri's just very, you, you very similar. Zoomer. Maybe we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, and Zeri is, you know, Zeri has been a champion that's been pretty much must ban. And there was a time when Jinx was uh, one of those really, really strong champions that was maybe not necessarily must ban because you could contest it with like the Aphelios, but certainly had huge pop off potential. And mm -hmm. that's what Impunity have gone for. Onyx clearly has a comfort level on this champ, and both teams seem to be relying a lot on their AD carries. A lot put into the AD carry basket, and it's going to be a. <laughs> This is a big test uh, because really it's all about these AD carries. Yes, BYG can play a little bit through some of uh, their other champions, uh, but especially for Impunity, it's uh, Onyx or Bust. And at least he's very experienced in that department. Again, uh, when he was on AHQ, his shining champion was that Jinx and. Um, you know, we even saw it a lot over at Worlds. This was uh, uh, their playstyle. Get get the Jinx on hand and try and roam as much and facilitate for this Jinx to make sure he gets as much gold. And once he gets to his three items, he just shreds through these targets. And that's going to be a similar case here, but they can't give up too much on these side lanes. The Jinx can only hyper carry so hard. Yeah, not to mention you need time, right? I mean, I think Impunity are going to need to try and set themselves up for success as much as possible. I do like their lanes. I'm a little surprised that the top lane didn't go as head-to-head -head as it did, that the Sejuani showed very early and showed definitely as a top laner uh, pretty quickly. I, I, I think, um, you know, there was an option to maybe see it at support. There was always that flex, but it feels like it was a bit of a bluff on the Beyond Gaming side. Nice you just goes for the Gnar. I, I feel like the potential may be a little wasted there, right? Like, you, mm -hmm. you were hoping to see a bit more but we'll talk about that a little later, as there is a Husha lane gank incoming right now. He steps forward. I think Winnie and Onyx might know something's up. As when you're playing with the Cole, you want to be safe. But the level 4 Husha gank, this is something Husha loves to do. Get active mm -hmm. early, set his lanes up for success, and he gets a little impatient, reveals himself, and just uh, gets a quick hit on there, a little lane tax, and he's out. Yeah, I mean, with the wave state where it is going to be hard uh they look to try and bait that gank didn't work out and especially on those plays you just have to uh make a decision very quickly because otherwise you're going to lose a lot of time alex going to go ahead and steal away this raptor camp but on the flip side uh beyond gaming will be able to secure themselves this dragon and right now uh, uh byg also 
Oh, okay. Here's the collapse coming in. They yeah, really want to go for this happen. split. Minji's here as well. It's going to be spiked down. They do immediately pull onto Kino. However, Winnie may have bought a little more than he could chew off that one. Wako getting first blood. So they get the dragon for dinner and a dessert. First blood kill onto their AD carry. Impunity. Uh, hmm. That was probably the worst outcome. Yeah, that was definitely a curious movement coming in uh, from Impunity and wanting to take that fight. Winnie. Um, I mean, it was a clear team decision, though, right? Where they all started making their move over. Winnie, obviously, uh, just going in to try and start out the play. But he is sitting on Glacial Augment. So uh, he isn't very tanky. So when he goes in, he pops very quickly if he doesn't land the hook on the right target. And for BYG, it's a very easy kill for them. And yeah, they just got to the play first. And... You know, Alex not level six. He he's lagging behind, and, and yeah. yeah, they needed they needed to be able to make the play a little faster. And I think uh, the the one thing we can give Impunity credit for, right, is like like our issue was with this rotating roster and with what we've seen in their play. It just hasn't been the team on the same page. Some of the same struggles yep. we were talking about with Sem Nine, but it, it's it's not that issue this time around. They're moving together. They're making the play. The problem is. They're just getting outplayed because they are getting out rotated on the map, so they lose Pryo and try to force the issue anyway. So, impunity against tougher opponents are running into the brick wall. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, at, at the very least, here's the positive: they are up in CS when it comes to their mid and bot side. Um, the mid lane's somewhat important because you need the Zillion to hold up relatively well. Uh, because of the fact he's their magic damage. Whatever a little bit of magic damage uh, they need him to provide, well, it's important for him to actually get there. This is really nice, of course, when you are the Zillion being able to help your jungler make up the EXP gap. That will help considerably now that he is level 6 and able to pull off his first big gank up top yeah. side. There is a ward thrown down, but it's not going to spawn him because there is a control ward. So Alex could find a good timing here. It is on a Sejuani though, so, you know. Ah, the Narbar. There we go. He's out already. I think if that had been timed uh, for a little better bait, maybe that would have worked. All the same, Leong knows. Like, like that. here's the thing. That play works against Lee Kai, I think, at least half the time. Leong is a much more conservative player and better in the lane. And that's one of the reasons I think Beyond have made the substitution. They... they you know, like, there's really no two ways about it. I think against the Frank uh, Esports game, Lee Kai got kind of clapped. That was why SPM oh, yeah. carry potential showing up. Yeah, and this time... Things looking pretty solid for Liang. Of course, he also had a rock in the Ignite, which is very common what we see on Sejuani. So, the ability for him to punish a play coming in from Impunity is also very common. Punish. As I see you. The brush. Trying to fight his way in. Uh, I don't think this is happening. Uh, maybe with the Narbar it's going to change, but Minji immediately turns his attention onto Alex as they do manage to take away the Herald. That's Alex going out on the clone beyond gaming. Uh, Alex going, going back in. in. For cast two. Let's see Wait if they've a got second. Oh, Kino with the cutoff. The they've actually got a great turn on this one, but Minji oh. is going to fall, but not before he takes that. Alex, I see you. Should as well. Can't quite get the damage out for the execution on the boulder toss. And it's one for two, but they're not stopping just yet. Kino going low, but they do have enough time for the double kill to come through for Waco. Big plays for Mega Bank Beyond Gaming. Oh, uh, Winnie. <laughs> yeah, Winnie uh, should have died, I think. Wuxia <laughs> just jumps past him. And Winnie's like, whew, I'm out. I'm out, please. Yeah, that, but... that was... Um... Pyro, that, that was just the oh overall disaster, though. Even though in the, the Winnie gets out alive, they lose still members on that play. It's a, definitely a negative play. Alex goes back in. Uh, of course, he has the Zillion Ultimate, and this is a conscious decision. But once more, uh, Impunity are late to get back to the play. To the start of the play. Goes in. It looks all right, but when Kino's, Kino's sitting on top so well. of the Jinx, the Jinx isn't able to contribute uh, enough damage. Gets zoned away, and yeah, by the time he's able to get back, 
Well, uh, it's all it's all done okay. and dusted. We're, we're, we're gonna get to watch this all right, again. Here we go. Here we go. Here comes Susha. Hoi! Ah! Doesn't what? go into the bush. What? He almost killed Winnie even without Did, it though. So he didn't know that he almost. <laughs> I thought for a second that he like knew and he just like, he, like like Winnie was getting away in the chaos, but no, he just flat out didn't realize he almost got a kill. Uh yeah. Hey man, and... don't face check brushes. You never know who's gonna be in there. Yeah. <laughs> you Could might be just someone get that you almost free two hundred. Yeah, you might just get a free 300 gold out of nowhere, but oh BYG Sometimes now... Sometimes face uh, checking is good. Yeah, uh, they, they do maintain their 100% herald rate, so mm. now they're also going to secure the second dragon, and everything is going in favor of BYG at the start of this game. So this is going to be a very, very early dragon soul threat at 21 minutes, possibly. That is also very scary for Impunity, because that doesn't leave you a lot of time to scale up as this Jinx, and she has to go for Kraken Slayer here. She isn't able to really pivot for a uh, uh, more safe build because of how many bruisers uh, are included on this BYG roster. And if you look on the flip side, like, Zeri has three kills. That's the other thing. You just can't let Zeri get ahead. Yeah, that's that's trouble, right? Is you really gotta be careful there. And oh, oh I see you uh, does manage to whoop. just barely dodge the bullet, but still the sun. He can't dodge Husha as he goes in on the spectral maw, claiming the kill for himself. Husha, very aggressive jungler, manages to find one. And beyond gaming, yeah, make no mistake, they were they were very favored coming into the day, despite the loss yesterday against Frank Esports. I think that says yep. more about Frank just yes. really shoring their strengths up as a team. But beyond gaming. This is a team that beat PSG in week number one. They certainly know their way around the rift. And Impunity are still trying to find their footing. They're playing as a team, but unfortunately, they're just late to the party as Winnie is going to be nice able buffer. to take the safety just out of there. Yeah. Apex doing pretty well for himself, though, right? He's got uh, 30 CS lead. He is going for Leandri's build, so um, not as much utility, of course. Usually, we see the Everfrost, but... Certainly, as the sole damage that wanting a little bit more oomph in his build makes a lot yeah, of sense. I, I respect it. I like it. I think I think uh, damage zillion is always a fun one because you never expect those bombs to hit as hard as they do. Uh -huh. So getting another blue buff. I I, I think uh, it's another way to to make sure that you don't you don't rely entirely on the jinx. Right? We talked about how this was mm -hmm. gonna be the yep. win condition for impunity, mm -hmm. but they've also got at least a little bit of a curve to their scaling. I think the Wukong from Alex, we're going to need to see more out of, right? Like, we need to see him getting to the place faster and setting up those big multi-man cyclones. Because that's yep. the opportunity for both Apex and Onyx to start unloading damage. If they can layer CC with ICU and Meganar, or even Winnie's ultimate, that's going to work really well. The problem is they're getting zoned out of this. Like, Kino's doing a great yeah. job of keeping them at arm's length. Leong's doing a good job of just face tanking everything. And Waku and Minji kind of don't ever have to worry about being in trouble. As the Immortal Shield boat is already complete. Yeah. Uh, I think more so for Waco. Right? There's oh, just yeah. no threat onto him. As long as he plays these fights out well. Um, and uh, there, there's so many ways for them to deal with the Wukong engage. He goes in. Well, they can either boot him out. Or Kino can just dive the back line and cut off the rest of the damage. So maybe he hits a four or five man knockup. But immediately Kino's just... Uh, cutting off the rest of the damage source by standing in front of Zillion and Jinx. And now, ICU is going to get cut off of life support, perhaps. Oh boy, here comes the crash. The Narbar is not quite there yet as he's run and run and has a flash. Will use it. Turn around. Here comes the cavalry, though. Apex winning and Alex four people. already there. And four they've people. got a one knock up under tower looking for the second cast. That's going to be the big one. But they flash away. The Jinx rocket sends them flying nowhere as it splits the uprights, but Kino can't quite get away from this all. The cow is running, but will be sacrificed as he gets gnarred out. They spend a lot to get him, but they do. They do indeed. 80 seconds until Dragon, and they are going to give up this bot tower. So extra gold sure going in the pocket. Uh, they will be exchanged up top lane. UIG, we'll see if they actually go and... I mean, they should concede it, but do they want Minji. to concede it? 
This is a 3v4 that they seem to be opting into, and there's the turn again. They do find the damage to delete Leong off the map. Husha a little bit low, but it was by That's right. time for Minji to come in. This is still a numbers advantage in favor of Impunity. Minji takes ICU with the Thank fade away. Those. And they're looking for him. This was very bold from Beyond Gaming. I don't think they respected the damage. As the hook comes through, Apex has arrived. They're under safety of tower, and even Onyx wanted Whew. to get involved. But look at what's happening on the Whew. bottom side. Wako just pushes a second tower. Don't mind me. I'm just pushing the second tower down it's here like, as like an AD carry. He's playing PVE League of Legends. Yeah, exactly. And he's able to get himself a tier two, which is a lot of isolated gold. And we can see that transition into just a full Phantom Dancer. Wako that is, is an so, item advantage. So strong. A complete right item now. advantage yeah. against uh, the Jinx I mean, that is out farming you. The, well, marginally. Yeah. Hey, I'm just uh, saying. Technically, that's the silver lining. Yeah. Let's look at this play again, because it was a very, very long one. A good turn, yes. but man, did it cost a lot. It starts out well for the side of BYG, right? You go in, uh, you know you have initial numbers advantage, but a nice response coming in from Impunity, uh, Aquino, throwing his body on the line, but now back in the live. He's doing it again as the bombs do land. Alex looked like he was caught in the beginning there. And this is a good spot. Both of the charges of his ultimate. Meganar comes up for ICU. Leong and Wako, though, nicely to Onyx, who flashes okay, back. They can turn back. They can tower. turn back. They can make this happen. Looking for more right now. Leong face tanking it all up as he tries to limp away. But this is what you like to see as a Jinx. You like to be in the back line, just continually chasing them down. They can't get the kill credit, but they do have dragon priority, and they maybe can cut off the Drake stacks. ICU doesn't have Mega. He needs to start building up that bar. It did just fade away. He does have Mega up available it when he, or he does have Nar ultimate, uh -oh. but when he is uh, dead. Gets caught, goes golden. They're oh wait, split a that's bit the rest. They that's do the rest. have Bazillion ultimate. Alex still finishing off the dragon. That's actually get massive. It. Yeah, that's pretty big. They don't lose anybody just yet. Look at how low Wako is if they can find the kill on him. Winnie gonna get the knockup onto Minji. He's out of there for now. Kino isolated from the team. The knockup goes through with him. Headbutt Pulvin out as Alex was denied. But man, Impunity don't lose anybody, but they do grab Dragon. They don't lose Tower. Not a bad turn of events. That is a massive, massive win for Design of Impunity. Giving, uh, making sure they are able to get that Dragon. Probably the most important. Uh, part of that moment, which means that the delay and buy more time for on to get that next item, get to that third item, uh, make sure he gets either to the Infinity Edge or that uh, Lord Dominic's regard. And he's mm -hmm. going to need one or both of those items to really make a difference with how many bruisers are on the side of BYG, how many large health bars. But Blader Rune King, it looks like it's going to be that bruiser build coming in from the Yone. Blader Rune King into one of those tank mythics. And they bad, are going to... Theory. Yeah, I'm trying to maintain their 100% Rift Herald rate. Well, Shelly's getting pulled pretty far out of home right now. See uh, Winnie, Alex, Onyx, and Apex can make it happen. That's going to be the start of the fight for Minji. Pulls himself back. One of those things Thanks you can do with as a Yone, you just completely rubber band yourself out of harm's way. Shelly getting a little bit aggro and gonna reset. Oh, that's so a Beyond reset. Gaming, don't okay. get anything for the trouble here as they the get same. the isolated catch onto Hushay. He goes with the Heartbreaker on the ICU as that Marbar is not quite up to snuff and the chase is happening on multiple fronts here. As Husha does fall, Minji going in, going out, and getting shut down. Oh, that's two kills, Bond. though. You can't escape. However, they keep on charging. Kino trying oh, to call the flank is one HP. Apex getting chased down by Wako, and they will be able to turn it. The Anix is still up, though. The they Kino have to kill him. Oh, boy, looking for Wako, and he's just able to get it, but it's Woo! mutual shutdowns. Impunity win the fight with the triple kill for the Zeri, and Alex is the last man standing. Jungle Gap. <laughs> Jungle Diff, man. Oh, what a literally, crazy fight. It literally came down to one HP. We could have had a double ace out of nowhere. It wouldn't be oh. the first one. Oh, we and gotta watch that again. See, what a fight. Yeah, I mean, this, this fight was just so chaotic. Uh, this is probably one of the best parts of the durability patch, too. Like, really. these fights just go so, so long. Everyone gets see the durability patch. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Kino trying to section off uh, this is what went well last hero fight right you know goes in sections off the damage and there's no damage there but this time around uh, they jump onto the back line but they are able to keep the zillion ultimate for the carry 
this time around. So even though Apex does die, uh, Onyx comes back with a full HP bar. And ICU able to return just in time to, uh, well, sort of keep his, uh, oh, <laughs> his AD he, carry alive. He and literally fell. dies with his W or his, his Ultra Shock laser casting. Yeah, Holy yeah. Crap. And like Zeri is so Look at that damage. busted Look on at that Mountain damage. Rift too. It's so 5, hard to play. Seven hundred against in that team Zeri. fight. Yeah. Good lord. Yeah, I mean this is why you're supposed to ban it. But man, yeah. Beyond Gaming yeah, yeah, just said, yeah. "All right, uh, we're leaving it open," and, and and Onyx is like, "No, no, no, I don't. I, I, I can't figure out that Zoomer champion. Give me, give me Jinx, you know." No, I, I, I kid, but on, on did a really good job in that fight, but just, mm -hmm. man, the, the, the difference of having a fed Zeri now with the triple uh -huh. kill on top of it all working Almost towards an the IE. IH as well. Oh, gosh. Well, oh, once the IE gets completed, it is so hard to play the game now because you're trying to get into these choke points. And remember, Ultra, so uh, Ultra Shock Laser can crit. So you're going to be playing into a 95% crit Zeri and it's mountain rift like oh, oh how do you get out of these choke points so when it comes to this next dragon impunity have to get there very early on otherwise it's just uh, a nightmare to ever play the game and they need to they need to get a little more time too right because we just see onyx completing his second item the rapid fire comes through the silver lining though apex has gotten very fed himself has the rabbitons so now mm -hmm. this uh, Zillion's mm -hmm. uh, really going to hurt. I mean, we saw the bombs doing so much work. Like, even though Minji gets in, gets out, does he really when he's got a bomb on his head? <laughs> he's uh, taking a party gift <laughs> to the rest of his right squad. So if he's able to find these double bombs, that definitely will be a big impact. But as we see the Mythics, uh -oh. they are really, really tanky. Yeah, they do find the stun off on Apex, and he might need to save that ultimate for himself as Minji goes into the back and knock up Alex. Does mean they can't quite finish with this one, but the rest of BYG are very reset. healthy as ICU finds the arc against the wall. Is there any follow-up damage? No, Wako taking low, but escapes Addicts. around the side. That's Minji a reset. Falls. Onyx is That's going reset. on the get excited. That's another. Gets the second one. Kano with the knock up, but is he going to stay alive in this? That's the Wako's one comes HP. Through. They're looking for them all. The double bombs on beyond to fall in a quadra kill for the Jinx. And they're chasing up the mid lane. Nice try, buddy. This is how I got to Worlds, baby. And it's showing up massive with his trademark jinx. And that will be Impunity being able to run away with this Baron buff. The game has completely and absolutely Pyra flip floppity flop. That was massive. Impunity pull out such an incredible fight. Everybody does the job they need. They not only get the dragon, they get the Baron off the back of it, claiming two huge objectives, plus the Goldie. Let's look at this fight, because it was Beyond Gaming that started it. Yeah, Beyond Gaming, find the stun onto Apex, which is really, really good. Minji gets into the back line, also really, really Beyond. nice. And now they they start funneling to the choke point, which, I mean, all of a sudden you have to deal with the, the double bomb control. You have to deal with uh, just grouping up, piling in for this Jinx to hit multi-man rockets. And this is very well played. They don't threaten anyone besides the Jinx, which means that Apex doesn't need to throw his ultimate onto any other member besides the Jinx. And that means you have to kill Jinx twice and... Right now, yes, your Zeri has a ton of damage, but remember, this is a comp with four bruisers and a Zeri. Look, look at that damage. Oh man, it's so close. It's such a toss up between Onyx and this Waco. Is so fun. I love that. Oh, this look is the at moment. That this, is the, this is the moment that Onyx just says, all right, sit down, young man. I got this. Uh, I love what Diddy is doing right here. This squad and they're doing exactly what they need to here comes the knock up from Kino. Will it be the turnaround for BYG? That teleport coming a little bit late here. Three men. Quite get the That's the rest. 
As Onyx is getting now raised they reset up. the fight. Oh, no, they can't go for the round two here. And they've lost Leong as he just absorbs so much pressure. But finally, Double Paul, reset. Waco in the back, but he's run out of front line. As they get the hook off, denied a bit by Minji. Here comes around the backside. Oh, no. Shot, but Onyx is holding on. He uses his flash to get to safety. Waco dodges out of danger, but he's Waco won. Can out still of do steam. this. He's trying this is Zeri. to go for more dodges. The big it's still Zeri. That's a big shutdown that's going to cut off the push. Oh, what a what a game, what a fight, and what a scrappy play by both teams. And that fight could have just been won by Wako himself. Again, Zeri, a very much 1v9 champion. Yes, Jinx has those big quadra penta moments, but you need the team to play around her. Zeri himself, uh, herself, once it gets to those low health bar statuses, the, the spark can easily finish off targets as we get to see the replay a beautiful ultimate coming in from Minji to occupy so much of that backline time but they just don't have enough damage from this front line there's not enough oomph here and Wako comes under threat able to get out because he has the extra movement speed in Husha that was the moment that could have turned the fight because if Annex does get picked off by that uh, ultimate that's off to the races for BYG instantly. The game turns on its head once more, but not enough. I love the fact that ICU tries to go for the, uh, the kill shot right there by flashing in. Uh, get the NAR ultimate onto uh, Waka, but it's not enough. And uh, uh, unfortunately, he does go down, <laughs> but it burns the flash onto Zeri. So yet another safety tool removed from this 1v9 champ. Critically, though, Husha also burned Onyx's flash in that last fight. So now we're in a situation where <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's really all about watching those carries. And I think for Impunity, they're going to try to keep Onyx as safe as possible. But Onyx has been doing a great job of positioning. And speaking Good of oh, just getting back. Oh, man, they cut Minji off right before he can get in front. And even with the fade oh, away, that's the a rocket reset. saying goodbye. That's a reset. Kino now isolated from the Kino's pack. Not. Sure, he can get a knock up. He does get a lot of damage onto the Jinx, but he knows he's just letting his team survive. But now... It's 3v5, baby. That's a two-man advantage. They're going to run straight down the mid lane. This Ooh, Whoa, Ultra Shock laser. laser Crit. Oh, boy. It's not over yet. This one is scrappy. Got to dodge Whoa. those lasers as they take the tower down for the reset. Nothing else to get on the map here, Nightstar. Not for another minute. Oh, look at that gold graph. My, how the I changes. love watching Jinx versus Jinx on steroids. That's uh, yeah, that's very in a nutshell. I don't. I mean, I don't know, man. I, I think Jinx this game is starting to uh, like Onyx was down a full item, and he caught up. Yeah. Um, great play coming in from the rest of his team, being able to make sure he's supported. Uh, and he is now on to his three items. He's on to a hundred percent crit because of that extra crit cloak. So he will be doing a lot of damage and he needs to do it because again like there's a lot of meatballs to try and chew through he's a very oh, yeah. uh tough oh, meatballs oh, 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 i see you walking straight into that ah, one i didn't even get the oh, nar bar out unfortunately this is a 5v4 now beyond oh they have to back off they have yeah, to yeah they're gonna take they, they, they can't all right yeah i see you just wanders in he hits the boomerang like you I'm pretty sure he hit the boomerang there. Maybe, like, uh, the maybe a sidestep. but it looks like it. Yeah, now, it's Minji very possible, but too. oh, this is an opportunity. All right. Oh, he takes his way out to freedom. Never mind. Uh, okay. Yone does Yone. Nice thing. try. Yeah. That was a nice attempt. Um, and critically left? though, Apex or Alex loses his stopwatch trying to make that play. Um, might have been a bit of a misclick there, but it's still a big cooldown eaten up. Uh, we'll see. Maybe he's very close to his GA, and that's why he's willing to go ahead and burn that. Uh, we'll see you on the next. Uh, nope, not quite. Uh, I thought he, you know, might have had the might goal, have fingered that one. but yeah, that will be a key cooldown to keep track of, though. Uh, if he goes in, he does not have a way to get out because they don't want to use the res on this Wukong pick. They want to use the res onto the Jinx. Speaking of GA2, Wako has got it himself. So both of these bottom laners are going to have a chance 
a second chance, I should say, if they fall in the battle. <laughs> Man, it's, it, it feels a little bit like Spring Split, where you've got these two massive AD carries just wailing on, a, as you put it, a bunch of meatballs, uh, especially on the Beyond Gaming side. And the fight's just going to completely depend on uh, who's better protected, who puts out more damage overall. Mm -hmm. It's good old classic League of Legends, Nightstar. And it's a banger. Very, very old school League of Legends. All about these AD carries. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is where definitely... Onyx is going to feel very comfortable. He knows the game. Yeah. Waco, you know, he's he's had uh, a fair share of oh, his yeah. competitive experience, so, you know, it's not outside that realm. Uh, but now, when it comes to objectives, again, the objective setup has to be big here, because if either of these teams get into the choke or get into river first, that's a big advantage for them, because trying to fight through these choke points is incredibly difficult. Uh, on one side, you have BYG with the Ultra Shock Laser being able to control so much space and then on the flip side uh, if you're trying to fight through choke it sets up very easily for the meganar to come through or that wukong ultimate to really punish the back line yeah i think that's one of the huge things about mountain rift as well it gives those openings a little bit more opportunities for icu to pull off the big plays i think the big improvement though uh for impunity this game has been it's it's so night and day from like the first 10 15 minutes to the second as we hit that 30 minute mark They've just been so much better at getting on the objectives faster and finding the fights they need. Whereas in the beginning of the game, it kind of didn't really take. Yeah, and now they've started to simplify the game as well. Just They're just five, five men. Yeah, five man group. There's no need to overthink things, which is sometimes what they did. As they get the flash oh. the hook into Kino. A lot of damage, but they're turning back. ICU, the Narbar, not quite there yet, but they will be able to carve a flank stake off. As the laser prison comes out from Liang, they do find Alex on the side, but it's a bit of a big oh, Alex! Alex comes up massive as Minji's trying to That's hold the, the line in the back. Doesn't it's free. mean a thing. They get the double kill. And Pinati have like that? shooting fish in a barrel for the Jinx. That's going to be another kill. The triple coming through. Gonna find that quadra. No, it's taken away by Winnie. And my goodness, who should the last man standing? But his base won't be so lucky. And at 32 minutes into the game, these are 35 second death timers. I don't know if they can actually finish given uh, how small this wave is him. that's coming in and the fact that Kino will be respawning, but maybe they try and uh, end this game right here, right now. They're going for it right now. Impunity going for gold, looking to try and end their week two with a 50% win Still rate. Still such a long here time for the Hushin carries. Kino. Oh, it's a lot of time as they do buy a tiny bit. Who should go in golden, but he's certainly going to fall as they layer on everything they need to, and they're just shredding through the towers. Kino trying to pinball Minji's the team up. away, but they Sign will not be able to do it. Minji is up is trying to do this. They just need to hit the Nexus, and they do! Impunity with the victory! Oh my god, Impunity, find a massive victory in BYG, swapping things up, bringing Liang into the roster. Honestly, Liang's play wasn't even all that bad, it was very, very solid, even on the Sejuani. Uh, certainly not a champion that we would expect in his champion pool, but he performed what he needed to do, and unfortunately, I mean, the side of the Impunity played to their strengths this time around. They actually played to their win conditions, which is not what we've seen in past iterations. But this last fight, I mean, for the longest time, they just couldn't do anything on the side of uh, BYG. That choke point, really, really hard to overforce into. And now, beautiful Meganar, and like, you left the Jinx unchecked. Uh, you burn too many cooldowns, and after that moment, it doesn't matter that Jinx hasn't participated at the start of the fight. He just goes ham at the second part of the fight, and yeah, it was just easy pickings for Impunity. Impunity get a massive win, and this is what the Impunity organization was looking for when they made these roster moves. It was for these upset victories against the, you know, the upper what we would classify the upper echelon uh for beyond gaming and maybe now we bring beyond gaming back down a notch i mean we have to this is not the first game they've lost this week against an opponent they were supposed to be favored against the team that beat psg one of the only squads to do it and now they've lost two one to frank and one to impunity 
But for Impunity, this was massive, right? Like they, they built a composition that was going to let them funnel a lot into the Jinx. They also put a lot of damage on the Zillion. I think that was quite massive despite being so heavily banned out. Uh, Apex did a great job. I think there were still some kinks to work out, right? Like ICU kind of went off on his own, a little bit of negative gaming here and there, but when it counted, the NARS were massive. He had the killer instinct, the aggression to see it through, even if he didn't hit every single shot. Well, you take the shot every single time. And I think having an aggressive player like ICU allows you to do that. Alex held his own. He needed to, to use the Wukong, sometimes defensively, sometimes uh, offensively. And he did everything he needed to. Uh, that was just such a brilliant game, I think. Uh, it took a little while for Impunity to get going. Mm -hmm. But once they did, they were off to the races. They knew the game plan and simplicity was the order of the day. So they improved to three and three. They take Beyond Gaming down, a tough matchup that they can be very, very happy about that victory. And honestly, Nightstar, I feel like the only person on Impunity's roster that's not feeling good about that is probably LZ, because On just showed up huge and made a statement for the starting spot. Yeah, however, at the same time, right? Impunity have outlined their recipe for success. That is, craft a Protect the Jinx composition. Um, and... How many times are going are they going to actually get that if Annex is starting them? Uh, do they just get Jinx bans now? We've already seen against some nine, Maybe. you just ban the Darius, you know, and the, and then what's left up in the top side for no name? Perhaps that's going to be the same strat uh, taken by teams playing Annex's uh, impunity. Maybe things uh, change up a little bit with LZ. I, I'm curious. I, I, I wonder if that's something that is going to be considered by other teams or if they'll just think this is like a one-off outlier, that type, that type of thing. Maybe, maybe if we see a lot more victories like this, if teams want to knee jerk and make that play, I mean, that's always possible. Maybe that's when LZ comes in on a rotation, but I do think I liked what I saw here, not just from the bot laner, but from the mid as well. Apex did fantastic. So the experience certainly came in handy this time around for the team. And Clearly, they love playing Nautilus, and it works out well for them, or at least decently enough. And man, look at how close the damage charts are. Still, at the end of the day, Waco <laughs> out-damaged Onyx. I don't think you can take anything away from him. He played a mean Zeri game. It's just, unfortunately, his team was not able to protect him quite as well as Impunity did for Onyx. It just came down to when it's a 1v1 fight uh, between a Zeri versus Jinx. The Jinx is going to do better and outperform the Zeri when it's a straightforward front to back, no flanks, uh, no one applying pressure onto the side where Jinx doesn't have to uh, think about rocket placement. Whenever those rockets come into clumps of people sitting on top of each other, you know, there, there's only so much you need to think about when it comes to uh, prior, uh, target priority because you're killing all of them at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, now I don't think there's any surprise about this MVP performance. When you are the protagonist and you, t you get the team a victory, I think it makes a lot of sense. Everybody did their jobs, though, and Onyx, well, uh, feeling pretty good about himself here in his performance. He had been a little bit out in the weeds. You know, we saw him in Alpha Esports last when he was here in the PCS. Did not really uh, find a whole lot of success with that squad, but here with Impunity, a big, big win for this team to lift themselves up, not only in the standings, but certainly in estimation so good stuff uh impunity can can walk away from this week pretty happy yeah that is the biggest win in their organization i would say since making it through uh relegations uh, of course that has to be the biggest win right <laughs> where they actually made it into the league but since then it's been disappointment after disappointment and finally something the singaporean fans can be happy about from this singaporean organization Absolutely. They definitely brought a little bit of international infusion. But with that victory, we are done and dusted for two of our five games today. We're going to go on a short break. When we return, Frank Esports looking pretty red hot, and they'll be facing off against Deep Cross Gaming. That'll be a banger. You don't want to miss it.